Okay, everyone. Listen, I am so excited to share something with you today because my intention is very clear before I even got started and jumped on this to record this today is to leave you better off than I find you. And I mean that in multiple ways. I want to leave you better off spiritually, financially, and successfully so that this year in real estate is your best year yet. I'm going to, before I do that, I want to share a couple of things with you. By the way, my name is Kevin Yoder. I've been selling real estate here in West Michigan for about 21 years. So in that time frame, I've seen a lot in real estate, and yet I haven't quite seen this market. And I'm going to share with you some things today that I hope will allow you to not only recognize where we are, but also have you lock into where you want to go. I pulled some stats up before I jumped on today because I wanted to get clear on what's happening right now in real estate. So for the first time in a very long time, the NAR, the National Association of Realtors, states that membership is down. And that's a new trend. We were trending upward for such a long time. And why wouldn't we? Home sales were at an all-time high. So the housing market is under a lot of pressure. And that doesn't mean that housing prices are at a, at, a, at a lot of pressure. It means that the agent population is experiencing a lot of pressure. And that's because home sales are down 25%. That's a huge chunk. So if you think about it, when you look at the statistics and you're really clear on this, think about that. 25%, one quarter of all home sales are gone. And yet, not all the agents that that are going to leave have left yet. So there is this trend that happens with real estate shifts. If you go back to the other shift, it's exactly what happened then. Home sales drop and then many are holding on for dear life, clinging on for, for, for hope and just wanting to stay in this business, but not actually having a strategy for that. So 25% are gone. So the numbers are this, we still have 1.58 million agents in real estate. The peak was 1.99. So some agents have left. And so here's the game that's being played. And I want you to play this game at a whole new level. I want you to win this game. Don't just play to break even. Don't just, don't just play to tie. This year, 2023, if you want to play the real estate game to win and thrive in real estate rather than just survive, then stay tuned for this, this uh, presentation I'm going to give you today. Because I promise you I'm going to leave you with the tools that you can install right now that allow you to take your unfair share of the market. Opportunities lower. If you take out 25% of all the sales, that's an opportunity that's gone. So then the question remains, who's going to take up, who's going to absorb the remaining sales? Well, that's going to be those that, that figure out a way to do it. Adjust quickly, pivot fast, and maintain the mindset of winning. I'm going to give you a little bit of all that today, okay? Uh, so here are the numbers. We rounded out 2022 with about 6.2 million sales across the country. So NARA has estimated that we're going to end up in 2023 with around 4.3 million. So listen to that. It's about a 2 million home sales delta between last year and this year. And they've also forecasted that we're probably going to lose about 15 to 20% of the Asian population. So the question is, where do you want to be on that? Do you want to be on the winning side of that or you want to go back to the J-O-B? The dreaded three-letter word. I think we know the answer to that if you're being honest with yourself. So today I'm going to give you the tools you need and the mindset to accomplish that. Have this be your best year in real estate at all. So let me give you a pop quiz. Are you ready for that? Okay. So there are five frogs and a lily pad. One decides to jump off. How many are left? So if you answered four, then your math is perfectly fine. But we didn't get into real estate because we're mathematicians, did we? This is not a math problem. It's a life in business problem. The answer is five because there are still five frogs on the lily pad. Only one decided to jump, but he actually hasn't done that yet. So if you're contemplating what I'm sharing with you, this little quiz is a clue to what I'm going to share further with you today, how to be successful in real estate right now. So if you're somebody that's wanting to just hang on for dear life and have a average year, have an average year, or just be mediocre, then this isn't for you. Stay tuned if you want to change that and you actually want to rise to the highest level you possibly can. The, medio the mediocre presentation, that's on another channel altogether. That's not what's going to happen today. So this video is about being successful, uber successful, ultra success successful. You fill in the adjective. It's how to make as much money as you possibly want to in real estate. Maybe so much you don't even know what to do with it, but I think you'll find a place. So the challenge in this market is that, of course, there's there's um, 
there's the big 25% gone, uh, less inventory uh, is, is removing opportunities for buyers, which makes it hard for agents, of course, to get their buyers into homes. Interest rates certainly haven't helped. And uh, the result, as I mentioned, only the strong survive. So imagine if you're you're thinking about this or you're if you're in this place now where you're holding on for dear life, imagine a cliff and your fingers are just hanging on to that edge and you're wondering when the hell this is going to change and you feel yourself slipping and you know what happens if you slip. That means you got to go back to doing something you don't love to do. So now imagine if you suddenly have the strength within your fingertips and your forearms and your biceps and your shoulders and you feel it in your abs and suddenly you have this strength to pull yourself up on top of the cliff. Now you're standing there triumphant and knowing that you not only th survive, but you thrive in the hardest real estate market we're probably ever going to see for a very long time. So as I mentioned, I've been doing this for 21 years, four different markets. If I really were to think about those different market cycles, and this one is, unpre this is unprecedented. And I can remember back the first eight years of my career. So 2002 to about 2010, um, I was on a roller coaster ride of income. And maybe if you're watching this, that's what it feels like for you too. And that was all until I figured out what I'm going to share with you today. So this is what I want to share, not to impress you, but to impress upon you. But I just came off my best year in real estate after selling real estate for 20 years. And I intend for this to be a better year yet in real estate. And that's even in the face of this. So what I'm going to share with you is I'm following the process. So that's the good news. And I'm not trying to impress you, to impress upon you that it can be done. And yes, even at a time when most agents are leaving the industry. So the question is, are you ready to learn my secrets? Let's get into it. So I'm going to give you the five steps, five steps to thriving in real estate. Okay. And if you follow these, I promise you that you're going to have the same success that I did and perhaps even, even a greater level. So step number one, and this may, uh, this may kind of come as a surprise to you and that's okay because as my late mentor, Bob Proctor shared with me that the success that I've had up until the point that I learned these secrets was based mostly on what I deemed to be logic. And so if logic got me here, then it stands to reason then in order to get me to here and here, sometimes we have to do things that are pretty darn illogical. Like we have to do something different. We have to about face. If we've been going left all this time, it's time to turn right. And that means doing things that you would never think about doing. Step one to be the most successful agent you can imagine and have the best year yet in real estate is to establish a worthy ideal. What's a worthy ideal? This is a goal that's big. It's super exciting. It's a little scary and it causes you to grow in the process. Now, this is something that you have to do. It's a critical piece, and I find that it's the one that's missing for most agents' repertoire. If you're having a hard time in real estate, ask yourself, do you have a meaningful goal for both business and personal? And do they meet the criteria of a worthy ideal? That in order to, uh, but when you end, at the end place, when you've accomplished the goal, are you a different version of yourself because the goal caused you to stretch in the process? If not, it's probably classified as like a New Year's resolution. Or we call them A goals, B goals, and this is a C goal, the ABCs of goal setting. This is the best type of goal because you can attach emotions to it, okay? And it causes you to grow in the process. It's scary because you don't have all the answers lined up. You don't exactly know how you're going to do it. But here's the deal, is that when you attach an emotionally charged why to it, then you, are, you have supercharged your goal process. So when you don't have the why attached to it, it's not going to work in the same way. And you have to go deep on this one. There's something called the seven levels of why. And that simply is, here's the goal. Let's just say, for example, you want to sell 50 homes. Take that 50 units and figure out the GCI for that. And then back out your expenses and have a net income variable there. Now, that number is the one that you're going to use to drive the emotional piece because it's not the money. It's not like you want to roll around in it, right? Play with it. It's what it's going to do for you and your family, mostly. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to travel? What, are you going to pay off some debts? Although I wouldn't use the debt piece as an emotionally charged thing because what you focus on expands. But you understand this has to be something that you're emotionally charged about. And then ask yourself a very important question. Why is this important to me? Why do I want to sell 50 units? What about that GCI is important to me? Now, after you write that answer down, do it again. Ask yourself, ask yourself the same question again. Why is that important to me? And then ask again, why is that important to me? 
And you've got to go seven layers deep. If you don't go seven layers deep, what you're doing throughout the first one, two, three, and four, and five, usually is you're answering based on your brain. You're just using your brain to think about what it is you want. You haven't taken it from your head to your heart yet. And it's usually not around this number six, you actually get into your heart. So go seven deep on it. Number two is create a personal growth plan. So here's my plan. I wake up at five o'clock in the morning, every single day. Sometimes on, on Sundays, I sleep in until about seven. That's kind of my coasting day, but just 5 a.m. It's called a 5 a.m. club for a reason. So what do you do during that time? Uh, meditate, pray, visualize my goals. I do a gratitude journal. It's called the five minute journal. I study, I uh, ready myself uh, for 30 minutes, um, exercise for 30 minutes as well. So this is like an, uh, I can pound everything into my brain. I want to learn. I want to express gratitude. I want to connect with the spiritual side. I want to say prayers and, and thankfulness for our creator. And then I want to go work out my body. And so by doing so, I have put myself in such a peak state way before most people are even awake. So this is the thing about the it's it's connecting the mind, body and spirit all in sync, all in one. The thing about the reading part, why do I study? Because we have to gain knowledge about being better and about our industry and about the market. And so what I would recommend that you do, I highly encourage you to read books on sales read books on negotiation, overcoming objections. Someone said to me a few months back, he was wanting to get better. And he was listening to a call that I had. And it was a recorded call for a sales training. And he said, can you please just give me what you have? Just install in me that thing that you just said. I need to, I need to just have it installed. You know, like, like Iron Man has his heart in there. And I said, that's not how it works, brother. I said, you've got to do the work yourself. You have to read the book and you have to go out in the world and apply what you've just learned. And then you go back to read and it's different material at that point, you see, because you've changed. Your brain has evolved. Your mindset is different. So it's, it's not something that someone can give you. In fact, it'd be nearly impossible to do that because I've changed as well. So gain information. And so that's called the rhythm of, rhythm of learning is you read about it and then you apply it, you see it in action, and then you take it back and that helps you deepen your understanding. And then you can take that deeper understanding back to your body of work. And it's a cycle and it doesn't just go like this. It actually goes like this up and up and up and up. Got that? So imagine if you just remove the reading and studying part from the equation, what do you have left? You have all that you have in here spiraling around and it typically spirals downward because you're bringing old baggage to the equation every single day, going out in the workplace, in real estate and applying what you've learned back then. Well, if that information is not serving you now, it's just going to be a spiral downward. And I, and I fear that's what's happening with most agents. So uh, learn it and then actually apply it because knowledge without practice is useless. And uh, the key benefit to all of this, a big part of it, a large part of it is to improve your self-image. And uh, so there, let me let me go there for a second. I think it's critically important that I share with you. If I didn't, then I'd be remiss because this is, if I found the secret, the key to successful living is tied into that self-image. And the reason is that in order to be productive and create better results and earn more money, which I think we all want to do and go past where you are today, you have to first change the image of yourself. I had to do that. Uh, so what is that image? Uh, the image would be, uh, we have two images. We have the image that we project to the outside world. You know, what we see on, uh, what we see in the mirror of Facebook, our friends, uh, associates. And then we have that deep down self image. That's the, really the who we are, uh, what we're worth and actually how the world sees us. There's a, a really good book on this. If you want to read more about the self-image, uh, Dr. Maxwell Maltz was a plastic surgeon back in the 1960s. So he did surgery on patients. And what he found is that he removed their face, like literally take their face off, and they, he, they would ask for a certain improvement. And he would fix that disfiguration or whatever the thing was, or maybe he'd change their nose. And what he noticed is that um, there was... a change in their appearance because he made them more beautiful or whatever the thing was. But he also noticed, noticed that for many, there's a psychological improvement too. They actually showed up a more confident version of themselves. But he also found out something. This is the fascinating part about it. He said, regardless of how successful that physical operation was, 
from his vantage point, he had turned somebody who didn't, maybe they had a disfiguration or their nose was this way or that way or whatever the thing was, uh, no matter how successful that was, there was no psychological change at all. So this is what had him go on this quest to figure out what that is. So he postulated that we actually have two images. We have the image that reflects back to us in the mirror. Then we have the one that we hold in our mind. And that inner, inner image is what I'm talking about. The one we hold in our mind, we put our heads on our, on our pillows at night. We know who we are. And that's what it's ta- that's that's what we're talking about. And as that inner inner image is changed, then our entire world changes. So in order to have the success that we're seeking, we have to change who we really are at a core level. We can't just go out and say hustle and hard work. If you've tried that and you feel like you're beating your head against the wall, there's a reason for it. And that's because uh, like a thermostat, I always do this to show the thermostat. So I'm adjusting the dial. If you think about the image in that way, our results are always a reflection of what's going on internally. Just like the dial on a thermostat is set at whatever degrees uh, here in Michigan. Now it's like 90 today. So we have that thermostat set down in 70. So the air conditioner kicks on. So we will always be consistent. Just like the thermostat, the air in the room is always consistent with the degree, with the temperature setting. And so we're always going to be consistent with the image that we hold of ourselves. I hope this is making sense to you. So like that thermostat, our image controls and regulates the temperature of everything we get. We can't outrun it. We can't outwill it. So if someone says to you, gosh, we could go on YouTube right now. I could share my screen and and gosh, you'll find millions of videos on hustle. I like the idea because baked within that word hustle is this essence of, of just going after it. What they fail to talk about is that if deep down inside the image hasn't been adjusted properly, then the hard work will eventually taper off. If you found yourself going after it for a period of time, maybe you had a a quick sprint that was a two or three week or a four week sprint. And then you found yourself self-sabotaging and sabotage comes in all forms. It could be just outright neglect of the things that you were doing until such time that you stopped doing that. It could be actually going out and binge drinking. It could be uh, distractions or cat videos on YouTube. You name it. Distraction is a big part of of a self-image sabotage process. So we can't outrun it. And um, it'll always regulate us back to our true self-image, just like the thermostat on the wall where the temperature changes. If the front door kicks open right now in Michigan and this warm air rushes in, the temperature in the room begins to elevate. So that's when the thermometer picks up that deviation. And then, of course, the thermostat says, "Okay, we're going to get back to homeostasis, back to where we belong. So for this reason, that self-image that I'm talking about is actually the key to success in real estate. And that because of one word, and that is consistency. It's consistency. It's absolute consistency. If you can remember one word from this entire self-image thing, just remember consistency because all of your actions, uh, your feelings, uh, behavior, and the thing about that too is also your abilities are always consistent with the self-image. They've already done the studies on that. The capacity for someone to do a certain thing based on the image they hold of ourselves will always act like the sort of person we conceive ourselves to be. And the other thing about it is you literally cannot act otherwise in spite of all your conscious efforts uh, in willpower. So hustle and hard work will only get you so far because this is an inside job. Uh, And that has um, been proven over and over again. Think about a person uh, one easy example to look at is think about a person that goes on a diet. Well, they they haven't changed the inside. They've taken a diet pill or some sort of apparatus on the outside to try to take care of the circumference rather than going right to the center. So we look at that and we say, OK, that is a doing. So you're doing a thing, uh, doing solution to a being problem because this true uh, order of change is be, then do, then have. And when we do that, we're putting things in its proper perspective. It's the difference between on that circumference versus the absolute center, going to the center of you. And that going back to the morning process, there's a way that you can change your self-image baked right into that. Read books about people that are successful that you want to be like. Start to emulate certain aspects of those individuals, someone you admire, what they're up to. Do you want to be like that? Well, then just, just peel off a little bit and install it. Okay. So, you know, it reminds me of uh, the, the, what I like to share is Jesus warned us about the folly of putting a patch of new material on an old garment or putting uh, new wine in old bottles. So if you try to just go out there and work hard, it's like you're putting 
that new wine into old bottle, you be in the old bottle rather than going right to the center. So that's the benefit. Those are the benefits of a morning process is all that I described, learning about your industry, working on your body, your spirit, and finally reading and learning and improving yourself and your self-image so that you can show up a better version of yourself. So that this market, if you think about this, here's an example I like to give, and this is the last one. I'll move on to step three is, is we can tell what someone is up to in the world. I can say that in a different way as well. We can tell uh, someone's degree of success in some aspects, in many aspects, and how much they can get done or will get done in their lifetime based on the type of problem that gets them down. And I say that because if you think about what we're dealing with here, there are some people that are trying to get uh, us to go to Mars and colonize another planet. Now think about the degree of that challenge. Big challenge, big massive challenge. Do you think that might fit into that definition of a worthy ideal? I think so. Mr. Musk is onto something. You see, that's a big problem, huge problem. And what, what are we trying to do here? We're trying to connect with people to see if they want to have us help them with real estate put our side in their yard, influence them to do work with us versus someone else, you see? And so what does that take? It takes studying and learning how to use sales and influence. It takes doing things that other people aren't willing to do. It takes experience through applied daily effort so that you get better at it, gain confidence. And I'll talk about some of those things as we go through the, the five steps. Number three, Speak, show up every day and treat this like a job. If you haven't done this thus far, now is the time. The question to ask yourself is if you've been showing up part time up to this point, it's time to step up if you want to stay in this business. So are you claiming to hustle and you're only putting in, say, 20 hours or 30 hours? It's time to step it up. Does your bank account balance uh, reflect the balance of someone who's showing up every single day doing the work every day? Or does it reflect something different? This is a question for yourself. So if, if not, it's time to reevaluate re your schedule and then start, start um, time blocking those DPIs, those dollar productive, um, those DPAs, those dollar productive activities. And what are those things? Well, lead generation, marketing, presenting, negotiating, and get real with yourself. What are you doing? What are you filling your time with? If it's not in your calendar, then it's not real. It's not happening. And so if you don't have lead generation as a two or three hour time block, and I would I would encourage you to think a little bit longer about that one, too, because if you have nothing going on, should you be home weeding your garden or mowing your lawn or should you be out there talking to people every day? I like to do a little exercise, which is to set things straight with this one. Gun to the head of someone that you love and you need to go out and get a new listing tomorrow by within within, let's say, 10 hours. Could you do it? We all know the answer is yes. We all know the answer is yes. So because the answer is yes, that we know that if we were put to the task, we could do it. So then why aren't we doing it? Why aren't we doing it? You have to attach it to a bigger why and follow this process. Moving into number four, niche down, niche your market down. I'm not the only one that's going to be saying this right now, but it's time to niche. What's one thing that you can learn in this business that will help you do it better than anyone else? Choose one lane and get so good at it. It's time to go deep instead of wide. You have many options here. You could be the open house king or queen. You could uh, focus on expired listings. Call listings, call expireds from two or three years ago. There's gold mines in there. I've sold plenty of those. I just sold a $950,000 land deal. It was an expired from the, during COVID. You see, they're out there for sale by owners. Something I love to do. Go deep with that. Get so darn good at it that people want to learn from you because you're so good at what you're doing. Uh, Facebook marketing, video content, uh, social media and database. So there's all these things that you could go super deep on. Now, listen, I'm going to give you a fair warning here. When you look at all your potential options, and there are many, some of these options will put you in direct path. So here you are, and here's the buyer or seller. There's a direct line there. And some of them will have you moving all over the place. You see that? So some are potential, some are direct path with potential buyers and sellers. And so if you want to um, thrive and not just survive over the next decade, it's imperative that you find one that's a direct path or a more direct path. You've got to learn how to influence complete and utter strangers to take action with you. And there's a little secret there. I just shared it with you now. 
is that those that are going to thrive, not just survive, have figured out a way to influence absolute strangers to do business with them. It's kind of a little secret, if you will, the top 1%. In that way, because of that, you, you realize that it doesn't matter what kind of market it is because your friends and family should be doing business with you anyway. Your sphere of influence, your past clients, that's a given. What happens if they all go away and no one's doing business? Then what? Then you're stuck. If you can't walk out the door and ask someone a question and then walk them down a path to agreement, you're in trouble. Because you've leaned on, you've rested on your laurels. Mom and dad and cousin Bill and Joanne and my past clients, they've already bought a house. It's time to figure out a way to get in front of more people and influence complete strangers to doing business with you. So this means prospecting for sale by owners, expired circle prospecting. You can even call your past clients as a part of your prospecting. Okay, so that's every single day, though, every single day. Okay, there I said it. I had to get it off my chest. Step number five something I'm really passionate about is called working with the law of compensation, working with the law of compensation. So law of compensation, something else I learned from Bob Proctor is that our in our incomes, just think about this. I'm going to slow it down just for a second. Our incomes are always going to be a reflection of three factors and they are as follows. Number one, the need for what we do. Number two is how good are we at what we do? And then finally, number three, how difficult is it to replace us? Let me go back to number one a second. The need for what we do. So imagine uh, there's three pizza shops on a corner of a busy, a busy intersection. Okay, so a busy intersection, three pizza stores on the on three corners. Now there's a fourth corner that's completely wide open in a vacant spot, and there's a guy that says, "I want to put a pizza st- shop there." Well, if these guys are just doing average, lukewarm business because it's diluted on that on that uh, intersection, then is there a need for what he does? We could also look at, say, an elevator uh, operator, <laughs> you know, someone that pushes the button, goes up with you and down. How about the hot dog vendor at the ball game? So there's millions of examples. This is more of a supply and demand piece. It's a, is technology replaced it? Are there too many doing that thing? I would argue strongly that the market does not need more part-time mediocre agents. Does not. There's too many. Because what happens is when you transact, you're actually not able to do it at the highest level because you haven't been through it enough, you see. So but what the market does need is it needs absolute pros, professionals. I got a text from a seller. I put their home under contract. We sold it for $35,000 over list price just three days ago. And I've been doing this for a long time, two decades. And I looked at that text and I thought, huh, there's something unique about that. There was a statement of gratitude. Kevin, thank you very much. I love that. And I get that from other clients, too. And then he said, we really appreciate all that you've done. I like that, too. It makes me feel good inside. It was the third thing he said that stood out to me. And I took a snapshot of it and shared it with my wife. And I said, this is why I do what I do right here. The third one is uh, four words. You are a pro. That's it. You are a pro. That's all it took. I'm like, that's it. That's the missing piece here for, for many. If you're not being called a pro, then what are you doing? It's time to step up. So number one is do something that, that in order to, to fit within the law of compensation, you need to, what you're doing needs to be needed in the marketplace. You're filling a void. So fill the void in the marketplace by being a pro, showing up and being a professional, a true professional in all ways. Number two is the need, the, the, how good you are at what you do. So number one is the need for what you do. Number two is how good are you at what you do? Are you so good at what you do that people can't take their eyes off of you? That's my own personal version of that. And I don't mean like in a, in a, you know, in a pump up way or some like trying to impress people. That's not what I mean. I mean that if you're on a phone call and you're talking to somebody and someone were to walk by and listen, they're like, man, look at that sounded so great. The questions you were asking, you were probing, you were going three to four to five levels deep asking the clients why. You didn't let them off the hook when they tried to give you an excuse for why they didn't want to meet with you if you're prospecting. You stayed with them, you cared, you came from curiosity. You started with curiosity, you ended with curiosity. And the whole point, the whole point of that is that you, it was obvious to me that you were doing it to leave them better off than you found them. That's what I'm talking about. And you get the results as a result of that because you're coming from service. That's being so good at the thing you're doing 
which means that number three is taken care of automatically. And that is uh, the difficulty in replacing you. So get so good at what you do that you would be extremely difficult to replace. Meaning in real estate, if you left the industry tomorrow, let's just use that as an example. And everyone's like, eh, no one even notices. There's no, there's no ripple effect left. And, and the market just absorbs the little activity that one, that you were doing. Or maybe it was because you didn't do it at the highest level. Or maybe you weren't leaving people better off than you found them. You see that? But what if you were a pro? What if everywhere you went, you everything you touched, you put your, your, your DNA is all over everything. Your fingerprints, everything you touched, every phone call was magnificent. Every appointment was on point. Some days you're going to be off. But most of them. You see, you showed up every day and you connected with as many people as you possibly could. You leave everybody better off than you found them. You're very difficult to replace. In fact, the marketplace would be sorely, you would, they would sorely miss you. And so get to the place that you, that you can get to that level. Work within the law of compensation. Do something that's needed. I think we have it here in real estate. Two, do it better than anybody else that you know. I know it's a tall order, but it's time to step up and treat it like the craft that it needs to be treated as, or else it's going to be something that you're no longer doing. Because guess what? Then you got to go do something else that you don't like. Why would that be? Just lean into the aspects of the business, knowing that if you left here, you're going to have to go do something that you don't like. That's a pretty crummy thing to think about. And number three, that you'd be so, so darn hard to replace. I hope that this has served you today. And uh, I hope I have left you. I've done, I've done what I promised I would do is to leave you better off than I found you. So now here's the thing. Lock onto the goal, create a morning process that is that includes learning and studying, learning from people that have done it before us. Create that growth plan. Get up earlier than you normally have. You have to do something that's a little bit illogical. And I think for, for many, that might be illogical. Show up every day, treat it like a job. And uh, number four is niche down. Niche down. Find something to get in your lane and just go so deep on it. And you're maybe, maybe it's it's just the thing that you've been avoiding. So look at that too. What's the thing you've been avoiding? And then finally, law of compensation. Hopefully, these five steps have served you. I promise you that they've served me and continue to do that. Anybody else that actually adopts them. And if you need to know more about it, you can always reach out to me and uh take care, everyone.